Okay, I want to go through my example of a, a Spring Boot application using MySQL. The source code is available up on GitHub. So if you go to my repository on GitHub for Spring Framework Guru, and you go to the repository spring-boot-mysql-example, you will get the uh, sample source code for everything I'm going to show you in this little code review of my Spring Boot application. So I'm going to toggle over to IntelliJ now. And what we have here is a simple JPA entity for product. It's got four properties on it, ID, description, price, and uh, image URL. So nothing, nothing too crazy here. And I also have a product repository, and this is using Spring Data JPA. So if you're not familiar with Spring Data JPA, this is going to provide a repository pattern for us to use in our project. And Spring Data JPA will actually provide the implementation of this. Now, I've written, I like to wrap things up in a service before we get to the controller layer. So I have a, a very simple product service that's going to do a list all, get by ID, save or update, delete, or then we can also save or update from a product form, which is a, a command pattern that I'm going to use from the controller. Let's go over here and take a, a quick look at the service implementation. And you can see that I've annotated it as a service up there on line 16. So this gets wired up as a Spring component. And I'm bringing in two, two different classes that are also going to be managed by Spring. So the product repository, that is the Spring Data JPA provided component. And then we also have a product form to product, and that is a converter class. And that's just going to do a simple type conversion for us as things get posted from the web form, they'll get bound to a product form, and this product form to product will do the type conversion for us. And just take a, a quick look here. You can see that we're going through the product repository. We do a, a find all for list all, and we'll get all the products and we'll convert those. So everything else is a fairly self-explanatory here. Now let's take a quick look at the product controller. This is a spring controller. And you can see there on line 37, for the root, I'm doing a simple redirect to the product list. So that will run the list. And I, I got two URLs mapped there, both slash product slash list, and then simply slash product. And they'll show the list. And pretty standard spring pattern here. I'm going to go through when this comes in. We'll bind the model. We'll add the attribute uh, products to it. We call the product service and get a complete list and return it back. So I'm not doing any paging. This is just meant to be a fairly simple example. And you can see I have a URL set up for the basic CRUD operations where we can create, update, show one, and then also do a delete down here at the bottom. And then if you're not familiar with Timeleaf, uh, like here's the list that we're looking at. It goes through and iterates out a table for us of all the products. Now, considering that this is MySQL, to enable MySQL for this, I had to bring in the jar dependency in the Maven Palm for MySQL to set up that connector. And then for Spring Boot, the application.properties, we needed to set up a few things here that are going to be important for you uh, to set up for yours. So there on line 5, I'm setting up the, the Spring Data Source URL. And this is the URL for your database to your MySQL database. And in this case, I am running against local hosts, and the typical port for MySQL is 3306. And I am connecting to a database called Spring Boot underscore MySQL underscore example. So you will want to change that property to whatever database you are connecting to. Now, a couple other tricks here for the Spring Boot settings. On line 10, 11, and 12 are some things to keep the data source connection alive where it will issue a periodic query. With MySQL, sometimes it will actually drop out the connection if you're idle for a while. So this is a, a trick to, to keep the database connection alive. And then here on line 17, I am setting a property to show SQL. So we will see the SQL in the console output. And if you're familiar with Hibernate on line 20, we are setting the DDL auto, and we are setting it to create drop. 
Now, if you're using this against a production database, I recommend doing something like validate because the create drop will, is uh, destructive. It will recreate the database with every time. So if you're in development, sometimes it's easy to get away with update and any updates to the database structure will get made on startup. But if you're running in production, normally you are going to be using validate to make sure that the data structure is matching your JPA structure. And then finally, I am using the more recent version of Spring Boot, and it is using Hibernate 5. And in Hibernate 5, the naming strategy changed. And on lines 22 and 23, I am setting that naming strategy. And then finally, on line 25, we are setting the Hibernate dialect for MySQL 5. So let's go ahead and run this now, and I'll show you the application. So I'm going to come up here. I got everything. Oh, don't want to do the test. I am going to run this. I'm running the main class. If you're not familiar with Spring Boot, Spring Boot application has a Java main. And we can see that we started up here. So everything connected fine. We are connecting to MySQL. It did run the schema export. And we can see that because we have the Hibernate SQL being shown, we're showing that it's dropping the table of exist and also recreating it based on our JPA mappings. Now let's toggle over and I'll do a quick demonstration of this. So I got up, up here and you can see if I come in here, does the redirect product list, I can do a new product. Say description, one, two, three for price, some URL. I'm not doing any data validation. This is just a real simplistic example to see that we are, in fact, persisting data. And if I come back to the list function, we will see that it, it did, in fact, do that. I can actually come in and edit this. And we can see that the edits took. I can come back to the list as well. And of course, delete would work too. And come back over here. And you can see that activity, the SQLs that were issued by Hibernate. Again, this is Hibernate 5. This is SQL that was generated by Hibernate based on my JPA mappings and what I was doing in the Spring Boot web application. And again, if you want the source code for this, head on over to GitHub. My name is under GitHub Spring Framework Guru, and the repository is spring-boot-mysql dash example.